All right, thank you everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I know this is uh, you know very early in the morning, so thank you for showing up. My name is Mohit. I'm a developer advocate here at Salesforce. And welcome to the session on build custom co-pilot actions with Apex. Any Apex developers in the room? Oh, a lot of you. OK, perfect. Right. Uh, and uh, I have with me uh, the director of product management for this whole product co-pilot, Gary. Gary, would you like to? Hey, everyone. I'm Gary Randere, product manager on Einstein Copilot. Awesome. So uh, before we move forward, right, this is our forward-looking statement. Uh, with that out of our way, First of all, I want to take a moment and say thank you, because you help us innovate better. And these are our contact details in case you need, need us for uh, you know, any further assistance after this talk. All right, so what's our agenda for today? So today, we're going to take a step back and understand all of the technology behind Copilot. We're not just going to introduce you to the Copilot, right? We want to understand the technology stack behind it, why we built it, how we built it, uh, and then we will uh, show you how you, as a developer, can build your own custom actions with Copilot using uh, Apex today. We'll focus on Apex. It does support flows and prompt templates too, but we'll focus on Apex today. We'll have some demo and then the resources to share with you at the end. So with that, uh, we'll start with like you know understanding of the technology behind this. You know the biggest transformational technology uh, for last couple of years have been. LLM, or large language model. And I think it's very important for us to understand like, why these LLMs are powerful and how we can uh, you know, tailor this LLM for our needs and make it secure for our enterprise use cases. So the fundamental characteristics of LLM is LLMs can understand context. That means you, know, you can chat with them, and they really understand the previous conversation. So anytime you chat with them, they can give meaningful responses. They can generate text, code. Any of you using chat GPT here? OK, a lot of you, right? So they can generate code. They can generate you know, text. Info. If you ask a kid to write essay, you know, literature, they can do it. Uh, and they have a language understanding. That means you know, they can understand grammar, idioms, and all of the, uh, you know, the parts of speech of grammar. So that's great. And they are adaptable as well. That means you know, they are generic to begin with, right? but you can fine tune tune these large language models to your specific task. And they are scalable as well. That means you know, they can be trained with new data, and a new model comes up. You, know, like you can see there are lots of new models coming out these days. So that's LLM in a nutshell. But you know, the problem with LLM is LLMs, you know, by default, are not secure. So adopting to enterprise itself is a lot of work. And our team here, Gary's team and you know, our security team, has build together this Einstein trust layer. And the job of the Einstein trust layer, in simple terms, is making LLMs ready for enterprise. And how do we do that? By reducing hallucinations, you know, by not re re uh, you know, by zero retention, which means what we do is you know, uh, we don't retain your, uh, you know, all the prompts in the da on data. right? And uh, we help you ground your data right? so that you know, we reduce hallucination, we reduce toxicity. So these are all the things that are required to make LLMs very, very uh, you know, powerful for adopting them for B2B applications as well. But you know what? Once we have this LLM, make it adopt to B2B applications, the thing is it still requires a lot of work so that you can use and build applications. And that's where we provide Einstein One Studio that was launched yesterday at uh, Keynote. So with Einstein One Studio, we give you Prompt Builder, which, is, which allows you to test and version your prompts. Copilot Builder that we're going to talk about, right? that's going to help you create that conversational AI experiences for your business needs. And then we have Model Builder, so you can bring your own model uh, based on your use case. right? So once we have this, all of these tools, right? these are all low-code tools. So if you have to start building your generative AI application, uh, we give you tools so that you are not you know, putting together your tools and having to manage all of these stack for yourself. And with all of these, we have Einstein Copilot, which uses all of these. So this is our conversational AI assistant uh, for, uh, you know, for all of you, so for all of, one, all of the Salesforce application. And you can like, tailor this Copilot to your business needs. And finally, you can adopt this Einstein Copilot across all of our applications on sales, service, marketing, commerce, Tableau, 
and uh, all of the industries as well. So with one unified metadata framework, as you can see, we have this whole platform uh, that does take care of all of your needs for uh, you know, generative AI applications. So with that, Gary, would you want to walk us through what is yep. Copilot? So essentially, we wanted to introduce a Copilot that is um, there for you in the flow of work. So what do we mean by this? It's one single Copilot that you will be able to use across sales, service, marketing, and more. What does it mean? It means that you could start with like, hey, draft me an email for sales, but then you could move to a case uh, experience and basically connect with different objects from the different clouds directly from one single, of the, uh, single assistant. Now, this will allow you to get more productive in the flow of work. So literally, you don't have to leave Salesforce, your assistant is there, grounded on the data, and so on. Second thing, it's deploy conversational UI with built-in trust. What does it mean? It means that at that stage, you'll be able to use the Einstein Trust layer. So the copilot is using our Einstein Trust layer to go get, fetch the information from the LLM and come back with um, non-biased data, non no toxic answer, and so on and so on. And then third is extending the copilot. And that's the most exciting for me. It's like you can extend the copilot with custom actions. So you'll be able to build your own actions and load them in the copilot. This is extremely important because at that stage, you'll be able to use Flow, Apex, from templates, and so on to actually build what you need for your business. In terms of how it's working, well, it's starting with a conversation. It's a conversational AI. So at that stage, you can say, can you create an email uh, for me to Alex Mitchell? What will happen there is that the copilot has a planner, a brain, kind of, that it's basically going to select which actions it's going to uh, use to answer to you. So in this case, you see that one of the actions is identify record, and the second action is draft email. So these are different actions that can be sequenced. At that stage, once the plan is uh, created, it will execute the action. So there again, as I was saying, the actions can be shipped by Salesforce, or they can also be using Flow, Prompt Template, uh, Apex, API, and more. Um, also, it's using the data from Salesforce from maybe external uh, services. So with Data Cloud, we can bring all the data back, feed that to the copilot, and get much better outcome. And of course, the user input. So in this case, for example, Alex Mitchell is, will be part of the input. And because of that, we are going to be able to identify the record and then create the email. So what you'll get, you'll get an email out of this. What's important there is that uh, arrow from outcome to execution. What this is doing for you, it's essentially using like the output of one action can be the input of the next action. So in our example, identify record, it got Alex Mitchell, found the ID, and then the ID of the record was used to trigger that draft email action. So that's extremely important. We can sequence actions, and it's dynamic. The last piece, of course, all this is powered by the Einstein Trust layer. So both the planner and all the, ex the execution of actions are done through the Einstein Trust layer. Now, the last uh, topic there is if you want to um, customize your copilot, you have multiple options. You can define what are these standard actions, the actions we are shipping out of the box to you from Salesforce. Um, you can decide which one to assign to your copilot. And then you can also uh, define custom actions. The standard actions could be platform, a bit more generic, like, for example, summarize a record. And then you might have uh, cloud actions that are a bit more specific to a cloud. Uh, an example of that would be the summarize action, even though it's generic, if you use it on an opportunity or a lead or a contact or a case, it's going to use different prompt template. We are not using the same generic template for all. So even these generic actions can be customized for each cloud. On top of that, you might have actions that will be specific to a cloud. For example, generate a sales plan. That will be for sales cloud, helping you to, as a salesperson to get a list of steps to close your deal. And custom actions, you can use prompt template, flow, Apex, external services a bit later. Um, and so what's important here is that what you have been using for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, Apex uh, flows and so on, you don't have to relearn this. Like You can literally reuse that directly in the copilot. And now you have a super strong tool uh, uh, in kind of your arsenal, which is a prompt template, where you want to say, hey, I want to use the, the LLM. I want to prompt it through an action from copilot. I can do that as well. And with that, I think we are going to see an amazing demo that will show you that in action. All right. Uh, everyone excited to see the, the demo? All right. So let me bring the demo. So. Here I am in Salesforce, and uh, you can see that I can, you know, just click on this Einstein there, and it will, uh, you know, it will present this conversational AI assistant. 
Now, we ship a lot of standard actions with it, right? So to give you an example, right? So let's say I want to search for a specific account called Wheelworks. So Wheelworks is an account in my system. Uh, I can just, you know, ask for it. And this is across any record in, in Salesforce, right? You can search for it because we give you that action. So now you can see that the Einstein is figuring it out and it's working on it. And there you go, it has identified that Wheelworks account for me. So I click on that and then I'm right there in that account experience. And then we also have some suggested actions for you. Like I can summarize this account so I can click on it again. And these are suggested actions. So based on the different uh, you know, objects that, uh, that are there, like standard objects, you'll have different actions here. And we suggest you so that it makes it very easy for you to take this action. So here I've summarized, so you can see it's summarizing and bringing this information for me. Now, all of you are developers, right? You said a lot of you know Apex, right? So how you as a developer can add your own action. That's what you are here for, right? So let me show you that. So before I kind of show you, right, I want to, uh, you know, take this example of a use case here. So here we have different products here in our system. Uh, and you can see that the products have product family, right? So I have a business requirement where, uh, you know, our account executives are asking, hey, if there is a way for me to like, you know, filter by different products and see different products for based on the product family, it would be awesome. Now, as a developer, you know, you can tell them that you can use list views, but imagine you have like, you know, more than 1,000 product families. How are you going to do that, right? You'll have thousands of list views. And the other thing is, uh, you know, of course, you can build lighting web components and stuff, but that's, you know, you have to build the UI and stuff, right? Uh, now with conversational AI assistant, you can think and approach this problem in a whole conversational way, and that's what I want to show. So here, uh, you know, you can see there is a product family. So let me actually start by a simple prompt here, which says, um, uh, which says that let me actually search for a specific uh, product family here. So let's go and say, uh, you know, find bikes for a Volt product family. All right, so I have this uh, prompt here. So now see what happens. By default, you will see that, uh, you know, the copilot is not able to understand this. That's because it doesn't have an action like that. You haven't, uh, you know, added an action to the, to the library of it. So let's go ahead and fix that problem here. So here, you can go here and look at here. So here, you can see that we have all the standard actions for you. But then, you know, I can also create my own custom actions. So I can click on New here. And here, I can choose my Apex here. And then it will uh, help me with a drop down here. So uh, I think maybe I have to refresh this. Sometimes it does take some time. And it is the beta state of the product. So we click on New, and I'm going to select Apex. And it should populate me. It should have a, a, a box for us to uh, sh allow me to select some of these. Maybe it's also latency. Oh, there you go. So there it is. So again, I can select my Apex here. And uh, you know I can select that Apex class. Now I want to go ahead and show you one of the, so you see here, we have all the Apex class coming from my system. And I have a new class now called find bikes for a specific product family here. So I can select that and it has the label and the API name. Uh, and then I can you know, provide the inputs and the outputs for that. So what would be the inputs for? In this case, it will be the family of the products. So this Apex action is going to run. And then based on the family of the product, it's going to filter the records and show it to me. So I can go here and show you the code that I have for this. So you can see this is my simple Apex class, find products by family. And there is this get bikes where I have this input. So to make your action available for uh, Copilot, you will need to make the, uh, you know, you'll need an at invocable method. And that's how this Apex action becomes available for this Copilot action. And then the other very important thing is now you need labels in the description because the planner that Gary was talking about, right? It uses these labels and the descriptions to semantically match and create an action plan. So it's very, very important that you have the label and the description. If you don't have, the planner is not going to recognize that. And uh, you, know, you also need for your input variables the description. Again, this is very important because the planner has to know what this variable is for. And similar thing for output variables too. Now, in the interest of the time, I'm not going to go hit and save. You can see that uh, you know, I already have this uh, conversational 
uh, interface with me here. So uh, now what I'm going to do here is deactivate this. So this is Copilot Builder. And this is where you can like test and play, uh, play and check all your conversation and see if your planners are actually firing it off correctly. They are feeding the inputs and chaining, uh, you know, chaining actions correctly. So here I can find that uh, you know the 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 find bikes for a specific uh, product family action. You can see here this is a custom action. So now I can go here and say assign this to a, a copilot here. So I, I went ahead and assigned that to the copilot. So now you can go here and see that now this action is available in my action library. So I'm going to go ahead and execute the same uh, command that I had, right? Find bikes for a Volt product family. So I'm going to execute it here. And now you will see that it will go and it will have to execute that action here. So you can see it's actually working behind the scene. And there it is. It is able to execute. So it took that product family called Volt. It actually went and queried that uh, you know records here based on the the Apex class that you saw, and it brought in all that product uh, and showed us in the UI right here. There, isn't it cool to be able to like write Apex and flows and then <laughs> use that in the conversation to trigger that? Okay, perfect. Uh, now with that, I also want to take a very complex use case this time. Uh, this is another use case where uh, you know I'm creating orders in the system, and this is a much more complex. Um, uh, you know, Apex class. So it's it's a little more complex because you can see that you know I'm creating an order here. Uh, so I'm asking you know my conversational conversation would be create an order for me for this account for this product family with this quantity, right? And uh, you know this is a perfect use case for Apex because it's it has some complex logic involved. It is calling a third party system to uh, see if there is an enough uh, you know data in, or enough product in my inventory. It's also doing some loyalty calculation based on the CRM data. I'm inserting uh, you know, orders, and then I'm creating order line items. This is a very complex uh, example. So how about we actually go and test this? So again, make sure that you have that action added here. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a simple prompt here called create a reseller order for Wheelworks account for this specific product and this quantity. So let's execute. So here we should be able to see, if this works, we should be able to see the action chaining. Because it has to look up which account it is, so it has to fetch the ID. Uh, and then based on that, it has to create an order. So here it is. It's, it's sort of working. Uh, sometimes you know it chains the action. And this is a work in progress for us. So we are still working on you know, fine tuning it so we can support more actions here. But you can see the action chaining, right? It identified the record. And then it went into uh, you know sort of identifying the record name, and then it is trying to create that uh, order uh, from from the system. So um, so there it is, uh, and uh, uh, you know with with that, Gary, I think we are uh, the end of the demo. I hope that demo was useful to see things in action and the action chaining uh, with. That uh, Gary, how can everyone access Copilot yep. today? So thank you, Moit, for the demo. Um, so basically, Copilot is available right now in beta. So you can go and ask your account exec how to get access. That's number one. Number two, uh, we have tons of resources there for you. So you can basically scan this QR code. You'll have access to release notes, blog posts, trailhead, um, trail mix, and so on. Uh, what's important as well is that you can go right now on trailhead and uh, test it out. So you can actually give it a try with Prime Builder, with Copilot. You have access to orgs where, if we are, where we have this product enabled. And then uh, last but not least, you are trailed DX anyway. So hey, just go at the different stations here. There is plenty of workshops that you can get hands on. Uh, we have the Einstein Lookout. And there is more sessions that are uh, about this product over the day. So go there. And if you have any questions, we are there just after the session. We are going to be just here. So happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.